Um, I'll be as quick as I can because I know it's already time for break. Um, this is the, just, I have nothing to disclose. The, when the patient comes to you, they can be in a situation where you have to judge when not to do the surgery and, and help them with something else. So the question is, do we restore here? Do we cover or camouflage? So to know when to do what, this is the um, presentation will focus on knowing what is available and how to make the judgment. Um, this patient on the right went and had the procedure done and as you can see, the, they didn't plan things properly. So this, these were the grafts done in the front, a little bit of back, he's thinning in between, he doesn't have enough hair to continue, so now he's stuck and in, in, can't take the hair back. So don't engage and just go with the surgery. Always think about the big, pic, big picture and what the person really can afford over the lifetime. We're talking uh, hair-wise and money-wise. Um, so there are hair systems. If the patient is Norwood 7, he's young, wants full head of hair, um, then there's a hair system available. So they're customized, they can be made to match their hair color, they can be made of synthetic hair or natural hair, so they can look very natural. And they're usually either glue permanently, so for a month they're glued to the skull, they go to the hair salon, they, they remove the glue, change it, and usually when someone starts wearing the hair system, there's a mesh, hair is woven through the mesh, and then the system, they usually come with several systems, so they buy a package of three sets, for example. They wear one set, after a month they go to the hair salon, remove, that system is washed, they put the new clean one, and so they always look clean, they can do all physical activities with it, so they're advanced very much, and for someone who doesn't have um, wants hair right away or doesn't have enough donor hair to do full head of hair, hair system may be a choice. This is what everybody believes about hair systems, but this is not really what they look like today. They are much more natural. Um, this is hair system. This is when you look through his hairline and when you look inside of his hair. It can look very natural. All these people, movie stars, wear hair systems. So. Um, you may probably even no, not know that they have hair systems. Why would someone choose hair system? Because they're painless, they have an immediate result, um, they're lower initial cost, um, they want dense full hair, head of hair if they are limited. Sometimes we say, would you be okay to do hair transplant here and put a hair system in the back? No, they want full head of hair. If someone comes with an over seven really limited donor hair, this may be an option. Um, and, and then they do look natural, so that may be a choice. Um, the problems, limitations with hair system is they cannot create a temples. So no matter how much they can position a hairline to look natural to match with the lateral humps, the moment someone recedes in the lateral humps or temples recede, they can't do anything. They have to do a full cap. Then it becomes a wig, the same thing what women wear. So in that case, um, hairline in, in um, lateral humps don't match. And sometimes the patient wants a low hairline, so the, you can transplant in a hairline, put the hair system behind, or we can transplant the temporal points and put the hair system to match. Um, and that is what I mean by complementary. So you, someone who is choosing hair system or doesn't have enough hair to transplant, you can always work in, in complement surgical procedure to the hair system. Uh, so this is the case where she would have her hairline transplanted and then the hair system was placed behind. So the hairline looks uh, more natural. How they are done and if someone wears hair system and comes to you for hair transplant, first you have to evaluate how much hair they have in a hair system and whether you can recreate that with the surgery and with how many surgeries. Um, if someone comes with a relatively thick hair system, you can suggest that they start thinning. There's a possibility they can thin out the hair system, they start getting used to fewer hairs in a hair system so the transition from hair system to hair transplant feels more natural to them. Um, then within seven days, they will have a temporary tape on a hair system to put after the seven days. First seven days, no hair system on, back on. So let's say a patient comes in, have a surgery done, they remove the hair system, and they move hair system to 
usually is attached with the glue underneath. Now they're going to have a temporary tape and something called clips, like a little combs that clip to the surrounding hair. So they can remove that at night, wash everything and move it and put it back on. So after the surgery, you're going to work with them. You're going to say seven days no hair system because they can cause infections. Um, you also ask them to wash their system thoroughly so that there's no um, dirt and, and I say dirt, some um, infection brought into the uh, healing area. Um, they're going to put the tape narrower in the front so they can still tape their his, hair system above the transplanted area. And then after two weeks when the scabs are gone and everything is healed, they can go to their permanent bonding, the regular routine. Um, usually it takes 12 to 18 months to transition out, so you really need a full growth. Um, you suggest that they change hairstyle when they take the system off, but it can work well together. And always make sure that when they're putting the system on, they don't tape onto the grafts because by removing the tape, they can pull out um, hairs and in, in, um, destroy the hair. Um, the other thing you want to consider um, as a complementary to hair transplantation, Dr. Lane mentioned the other day, is camouflaging products. There are two types of camouflaging products. One, they take and in, in have a fibrous bond to the hair, so, the, so let me back up. What shows as a see-through effect is someone has to lose 50% of their original hair count in one area to notice thinning, which means the light comes through, shines upon a scalp, and now you can see thin hair, right? So one of the ways of camouflaging this is creating a bigger shadow so the light that doesn't come to the scalp, or creating a darker scalp so that there's no contrast between a hair color and scalp color. So those are the two different products. The ones that have fibers, the most common are topic, um, nanogen is now nanofibers, and we in our office use nanofibers because they are more polarized, stick better to the hairs, and, and then there's this like a locking spray, and patients really like it. it does, it's not messy. One thing that I really like about that product is when you put it on, you can run, I can run hand through their hair, and the product doesn't stay on my hands. So it doesn't, doesn't um, it's not messy, it doesn't leave fibers on their shoulders. Current scalp, their match. It looks like a um, powder foundation for women. The same thing you put on a scalp and, and, and helps the contrast. These products are really good after the surgery um, or post-operative thinning. So when we are talking about after the surgery, there is possibility, I would say most people have some shedding, but there's a different levels of shedding, which means if someone came to you with some hair, you transplanted hair, this hair went away with the scabs, then this hair can start falling out within several weeks after the surgery. So they came to look better now that they look worse. They start panicking. This is a time when you, you suggest the fibers. And that will hold them during the transition time until the hair start going back in, which is about three to four months. Um, how do you suggest that they do apply it? After the surgery, they wait, you wait until the scabs are gone. Make sure they don't put it on the scabs and then everything is caked and they can't wash it off. Um, the second thing, you, if they're using Rogaine, they apply Rogaine first and then camouflaging product. They make sure that they wash it off to the um, end of each day. Another thing I wanted to just mention quickly, there is something, another thing that can be helpful with hair transplantation is scalp micropigmentation. We're hearing more and more about it. Um, it's little tattooing that is um, done on scalp for two purposes. One, to e um, e uh, create illusion of density on the patient. So he on the left, you can see these are all tattooed hairs. So he looks as if he ha shaved his head. So he doesn't really have hair and he cannot have hair transplant because he is, doesn't have enough donor hair. And this gentleman had scar, and the tattooing on the scar makes it less noticeable. And this is just, remember that the hair system are not bad. They look good today. Most of the time when they're well done, you can't tell. The second thing, they can be um, combined with hair transplantation, hair line and, and temporal points. Um, and camouflaging products can help for someone who is um, uh, 
you can have a patient who you did the transplant, there's still one more density, and they don't have enough donor, you can use a camouflaging product to help them achieve the look they want, or help patient after the transplant when they have post-operative shedding. And um, in the end, know that there's a, something else there called scalp, my, scalp micropigmentation, and you can research that more. Thank you. Thanks,